Hello, this is Tim Baldridge. Now, I've been thinking recently we need uh, some new uh, areas of closure to dig into a little bit, and someone a while back asked me to cover zippers, closure zippers. So I think we're going to take a couple of episodes and, and do exactly that. Um, today will be an ex a um, walkthrough of zippers, showing how they're used um, and uh, various features about them. And um, then in the next uh, tutorials, we'll go into how to create your own zippers, as well as how zippers work internally. And, and we'll cover a little bit um, uh, with these, uh, how these work and stuff. So first of all, uh, this is part of core closure. It's uh, with any closure install. Um, I'm not sure when they were added. I think it was back in version 1.1. So they're a pretty old feature. And they're also pretty cool. So here we have these zippers, and we're going to pull them in as, as Z uh, here. All right. And we have this data structure here. Now what this data structure is, is nested vectors. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4 is in a vector, and then we have another nested vector here that has 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then another nested one, and, and here in 12. So, so what zippers allow us to do is traverse the structure in a functional way. So what we do is, to start a zipper, um, we are going to start with vector zip. There's different types of zippers for moving across different data structures, and there's, and there's some constructors for creating your own zippers. But today we're going to use this one called vector zip, which is meant exactly for what we're going to use it today for, which is uh, traversing nested vectors. Now, if we do vector zip and we call it, we actually get a vector. And this is going to be one of the first fun, and I use that word sarcastically, things about zippers, is that zippers were created so long ago that protocols and records and anything like that didn't exist in Clojure yet. And so this, these zippers use raw data structures, which means it's really, really hard sometimes to figure out what exactly it is you're working with. Like this doesn't say we have a zipper. This says we have a vector. We called vector zip and we just got a vector with nil in the end with our data in the first part. So, you know, we gotta kinda think about this a little bit. Someday someone should update this to use protocols. I've threatened to do so. Never actually got around to doing it, whatever. Okay, so now what we can do is we can do Z um, and we're going to do node. And if we call that, we get back the node that we're currently at. So we start up here at this top level node here, right? And so now we're, when we call node, we get back exactly what we put in. Okay, that doesn't do very much for us at all. But if we do Z down, what we get is one. So if we're at the top and we go down one node, we're gonna start at the first element, which is one. So now we're at one. And if we do Z right, we get two, three, four. And we can do Z right again. And we get five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's that's this part right here, right? So that's the kind of cool feature about this is that we can um, traverse these just through directions. Z down again gives us five, six, Z down. Okay. Now there's other things we can do once we get here, right? We can do Z replace. 42, and now we're at some node that's called 42, okay? So let's, let's what does that, that actually do? Well, if we run this, we get this really weird data structure out, right? And that's pretty much useless for us. So if we just do replace and we look at this zipper, part of the zipper, that, that doesn't tell us anything. But if we do Z root, that'll go all the way back up to the top and give us the data that we put in with the replacements. So what we see here is if we go, we start here, we went down, we went right, right, down and down, and then we replaced that node with 42 and then jumped back up to the top. So we've replaced just this element here with 42 and everything else is as it was before. Now we can also do edit um, plus 42, and this will do the same thing, but it will add 42 to whatever the number was that was there. So that was five, we added 42 to it, there we go. Um, so what other things do we have here? Uh, we can also go up. So let's uh, take this out. So we have five, we can do Z up, and now we're back at five, six, Z up, and there we go. And we can also do this, Z, um, so let's, uh, let's, let's pull this out. So that goes that way. Now if we just wanted to traverse this entire structure, uh, we could do Z next. 
So we start off at 1, 2, 3, 4, now we'll be at 2, now we'll be at 3. So as you see, we'll start here at the top and traverse all the way down through all of them. So we could actually write a reducing um, system, so let's do that right now, by using next and using all these other, other elements, right? Um, and we'll call this zip map. So we're going to execute this on every element in the zipper. So we're going to, we're going to give an a zip node. Uh, you know what? Let's keep these arguments in the correct order. So given an f and z for zipper, we're going to run f on every node of z. And the way we're going to do that is by uh, the following. Uh, we are going to do uh, loop z and say if branch if the current node is a branch now this is a zipper thing z branch so um, it, these nodes with vectors here are branches right so if it's a branch then we're just going to recur with next and we're going to do that uh, z we're going to go to next now if not then what we're going to do is uh, recur Z, Z edit, F, and then we'll do Z next here. Now we do need a way to terminate this when we get to the end. And let's see here. If we look in the documentation for this, because I don't remember right off the top of my head, next, um, uh, oh, it, it will, all, it will um, uh, not change the value of the zipper if we are at the end. So we can do this. If Z next equals z then we'll just return our zipper okay uh, if z next equals z then we'll return the zipper and let's do a z root just to uh, get us back where we were at the beginning and uh, we'll go with that all right so now if we do zip map of ink with uh, z, uh, ve uh, z vector zip of data, everything is incremented by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all the way up to 13. So let's look at this again real quick. What we do is we keep looping, and then we say next will return the same thing that it was put in if we are at the end of the zipper. Okay, and we can actually probably do this a little bit better by doing like identical here so they're not semantically equivalent um, so they're not uh, uh, we, don't, we don't run through the normal equality semantics um, so then let's just make sure that still works yes it does okay so identical if they're identical then just return the root of z otherwise um, if it's a branch then we just want to go to the next because we don't want to increment or modify these vectors otherwise we're going to edit it with f and go to the next one and continue on so what's kind of cool about this is if you've worked with perhaps pre-walk or post-walk, this is very much the same sort of thing um, as, as those uh, pre- or post-walk. But what's interesting about pre-walk and post-walk is if you look at the source code for those, you will find that they're actually, um, uh, they consume stack. So as they go down and out of the system, they consume stack. This does not consume stack. It actually uses the heap and uses these little cursors to track um, where it's at. And we'll take a look at how that's done. Um, a little bit as we uh, continue on these tutorials. Um, so those are vector uh, zippers. There's uh, zippers for XML. There's zippers for sequences. Um, and like I said, in the next tutorial, we'll build our own just for fun. I'm not sure we'll build it against, um, I don't know, maybe an AST or some nested in hash maps or something along those lines. Um, but, uh, you know, we can play with that. So that's uh, the video tutorial today. Thank you for watching. And hopefully this uh, gives you a little bit of insight into a, a rarely used but uh, very helpful closure library. Thank you.